Hi guys and welcome to another Divi themed video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've been putting together this little one page scrolling site now. We're on the last video today. We've been adding all these sections. In the last video we created this menu to scroll to the sections. In this video today we're going to roll down below our Google map here. We're going to add a little custom footer. Then we're going to set this as the home page and we're done. So let's get started. To create a global footer, we need to go to the dashboard, down to Divi, and down to Theme Builder. That'll take us, that'll take us to this page right here. Here's the footer I've already got there. You can ignore the stuff over here. Let's just get rid of this global footer. And we'll start from scratch. Okay. Well, let's hit that add global footer. I'm going to build mine from scratch. Okay, and by default it puts a little section in there, the blue tab. And then you want to decide what you want to put inside there. I'm going to have three columns. I'm going to keep this fairly simple today. You can make yours as elaborate as you want. My columns, I'm going to have two smaller ones left and right and a wider one in the middle. I'm also going to make this row full width in a minute. So let's just close this down and I'll make this row full width. Go do that, go inside the little row here, the green lines. Click on the little cog on the green tab for a row. We'll go over to our design. Right there in the sizing, I'm going to make the width 100%. I'm also going to copy that, Control C, and paste it in the max width below, Control V. Or you can just type it in. We've got a full width row there. Fantastic. Great. Well, I'm going to give my little section a background so we can see what's going on there. To do that, we'll just click anywhere around here. We want to go into the blue tab. Go down to background. And you've got background color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask here. I'm going to combine a color with an image. And you can combine background gradients, images, patterns, and background mask if you need to. So I've been using the default blues and purples on this site. Let's just put a blue in there. As you can see, it's filled out that little section right there. And let's add an image and blend the two together perhaps. So I'm clicking on image. I'm going to click the little plus sign. I'm going to put that sort of burning ember picture in the back there. As you can see, it's in there, but the colors disappeared. If you want to blend them both, which I do, Roll down from the image right there, and we've got background image blend. And there's some fantastic things you can do with this. I'm actually going to use multiply on mine. But if you select different variations, you can come up with some great things. So do play with these. I'm going to use multiply for mine today. That's going to work for me. And just for a bit of fun, let's add a background pattern. So I'll roll back up, and let's roll over the background pattern. I'm going to hit the little plus icon. At the moment you can't really see them there. If I make them white you'll be able to see them. We've got polka dots. I'm going to add a little grid. There we go. And if you roll down you can make it bigger and smaller or flip it round. You can invert it so it's got the colour and the background doesn't. I'm going to make mine perhaps a little bit smaller. Custom size there. Pattern width. As you can see it's sort of doing that as we get up. Or if you wanted a mesh one, they've got a nice mesh one here as well. Just tra trash this one. And there's a sort of meshy one there. And again, we can take it down a bit in size, make it look like a real sort of mesh. And take it down slightly in opacity, which is transparency. If we go back to the color up here, this little variegated slider. Take the opacity or transparency down so we can set it right in the background like that. Great, well that's kind of interesting looking, so I'll leave that just like that. Now let's start adding our elements. Well, I want my logo on the left here. I'm going to use a simple image module for that. You can use the menu module and add an image that way, but I'm going to keep mine separate. So I'm going to put an image in there. I'm going to use my lighter looking logo. There it is, that's a bit too big for me. Design wise, let's go 
to the design tab and under alignment I want it to be in the middle and sizing wise I'm going to drag it down to more of a size that I want it perhaps something like that that's going to work I'm probably going to shave some padding and margin off the top and bottom when we're finished here so it's not quite so wide great well in the middle I'm going to have a menu so if we click that and go down to our menu right there and the top menu is the menu that I actually want there as you can see it's popped up there it looks like it's got a white background I really don't want a white background so I'm going to roll down to background just going to trash the background with a little trash can there and if we go to the design menu text I'm going to make that active link white and the regular link white too and there it is right there of course I want this aligned in the middle if I roll down a little bit we can middle align it there great that's gonna work underneath that I'm gonna put a dynamic copyright statement that will update each year so I'm gonna click on the module itself hit the little dark cross to add a little new module I'm gonna use a simple text module and right up here if I get rid of that dummy text right there you'll see a little disk type icon that's for adding dynamic content if you click on that I want the date or the current date but the format that I want is I really only want the year I don't want December 16 2022 before it I'm gonna say copyright I'll use the copyright symbol which if you hold down your alt key it's hold down the alt key 0169 that gives us copyright symbol then the name of the company system 22 I'm gonna put a gap there might want to spell that right then afterwards I'm gonna put a pipe which is a single line up like that and let's say all rights reserved whatever you want to put on yours now if I change that text you'll be able to see it in a minute it's actually up there date format I just want what they call a Y because we've got month day and year MJ and Y I just want the year so I'm gonna have an uppercase Y just on its own great now design wise I want to pull that in the middle and make it a lighter color so you can actually see it so the text make it white there we go that's a lot easier to see and that 22 as it's dynamic will go to 23 next year 24 the year after etc like that and I do want this in the middle of our column so I'm gonna pop that in the middle great now those are a little too far apart for me so let's squeeze them up together a little bit more I'm gonna do that with spacing make sure there's no padding on the top it's fine I'll use a bit of a negative margin if you hit the little down arrow you'll see it start to go up so let's take mine up by maybe 30 picks that might be too much that's not too bad could even do a little bit more yeah I think that's gonna work for me you can still get to their menu without getting over there fantastic great well the only other thing I'm gonna do here is just put a button on here like I say you can go to town you can put vertical menus by just adding your own links you can make it into a mega menu if you want to but I'm just going to put a button in here I'm going to hit the little plus to add a button here's our button icon again I've been using this sort of purple color I want my button to say contact us or contact and I'm going to have it take us to the little contact section there so contact the link we want to link to a section that section had a CSS ID of contact a CSS ID have a look at our last video how we hooked up all our sections with CSS IDs and it's contact that's great and let's style this little button and have it a bit more in keeping with what we've got so I'm going to go down to alignment I want it to be in the middle of the column that way when we look at it on a mobile or tablet it's going to be in the middle so I'm going to go down to the button and we can custom style this button. I'm going to make the text color white. The actual size is fine. Button background. Let's make it purple as we've been using those colors. 
I'm going to take the border away. You see the white border up there? I'm going to take that one away. And we'll have a little hover effect perhaps. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you roll over the dark writing, you'll see some li little icons appear. Go to the thing you want to affect. In our case, the button background. Hit the little arrow if there is one. Desktop is when your mouse is not on it. I'm going to leave that just like that. When they hover over it, let's turn it to blue. Fantastic. Great. Well, that's all I want to do with that little button. We're almost done here. This foot is a little too deep for me. And if you hover over, here's the row with the green lines and the section behind it. I think if I just take the padding away from the section there, it's going to be just about right. So let's click above. We'll go into the blue tab for the section there. Go to design and spacing and make sure there's no padding top and bottom. Simply going to put a zero in there. It'll put the picks in for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side. Yeah, that's about right for me. Might want to bring the button down slightly and the logo down slightly just so they're totally central. So let's just save what we've got here. So let's go up here. We'll go into the little logo, dark tab for the logo. And design wise, I just want to add a bit of padding to the top. So I'm going to go design, spacing. Here's the padding on the top. Let's try 15. Again, just put in a 15, it'll put in the picks. I think that's too much. I think 10 is going to work. And you can increment up and down with the little arrows to fine tune there if you want to. Actually, I think about eight is going to do it. And let's do the similar thing for our button. With the button, go over to the design just like we did with the other one, down to spacing. And we want to use margin for this. Let's try eight pixels. And again, just put in the eight. And the pixels and that's about right maybe a bit more that looks right to me if you use padding it's going to make the button taller so if i put 15 picks in padding in there you can see it adds it to the actual interior of the button there great let's take that back away and we should be good to go while we're in the button the only other thing i didn't mention there's a little icon there so if we close up spacing go back into the button if I roll down a bit more, you'll see all these icons down here and you can change font styles and there's a huge amount of them here to audition one, just roll over one. I'm going to leave mine on the default as that's what I've been using. But they've got a huge amount of fonts here too. Now if you want a button icon, leave that to yes. You can search for whatever it is here and put it in. I'm actually going to not have an icon at all there. If you want an icon there all the time, let's just pop one like one in there. You see it's got the eye icon there. If you want it to be there all the time, only show icon on hover. Turn that to off and it'll be there all the time. But I don't want an icon at all, so I'm going to turn that off. But that's another little option for you. That way we've got no icon. Great. Well, let's save our changes. We'll save the page changes. And let's X out up here. And there's our little global footer. Make sure all the changes are saved up here. Now if we go to the new home, there's the old one. I've not done it quite the same. I've got a, got a little gradient going on the back, but it's similar. When I refresh, you'll see the new one appear there. And there it is. There's our new one. With our little contact button and our System 22. And when we look at it on the mobile, it should line up logo on top contact button on the bottom so let's just have a look I hit F12 here I got the Chrome inspector let's bring up my devices toggle here we're looking at it on a iPhone 12 let's go to the bottom roll down a bit more we got our drop down menu we got our copyright and a contact us when I click on the contact, it should take us up to the contact section. Great, and on an iPad, it's going to do exactly the same thing. And again, do that, get up to our contact, and we got our back to the top button. So there we go, happy with that. Let's make it our home page so that when they navigate to the URL of the site, this is all that they'll see. Now, to do that, let's go to our dashboard. I'm going to go down to Appearance and then down to Customize. 
that's going to take us here. This is a, actually our old site that I started off, not the one we just built, but the prototype, if you will. To change our new site to the home page, we want to go down to home page settings. And you want to make sure that your page is published. If it's a draft, it's not going to show up in this list. Under home page, we want to select the page that we want to have as the home page. And that was called new home. So it's just up there. You won't see any difference because it's pretty much exactly the same site. There we go. Hit the publish. If we go back to this site, hit the logo. It'll now take us to our new home page. You won't see any difference. Just up here. It'll have the domain name just on its own. So there it is. There's our new website with our little scrolling menu there. And our live Google map on the bottom. And our little custom footer there. And of course, if we hit that little contact button, it'll take us back to the contact area right there. So I hope you've enjoyed this little series and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them or make a video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.